Okay, welcome, and thanks to all for taking a few minutes out of your busy weeks to talk some math. Uh, here at Lumen, we're very excited to have this faculty roundtable and also excited to, to really welcome two math OER superstars, uh, Libby Watts and Matthew Watts, who are living over in Chesapeake, Virginia, and both teaching out of Tidewater Community College. So thank you all for being here today. And then my name is Elizabeth. I'm our Director of Teaching and Learning with Lumen. And I will introduce Libby and Matthew a little bit uh, more in depth as we go through and start our conversation. Just to lay a foundation on things. I don't think you would be here today if you didn't know what OER was or if you weren't interested in open educational resources. But let me just uh, lay some foundation by why these are so important and why the work that you all are doing is really making such a difference. So open educational resources or openly licensed materials provide a lot of benefits for your students beyond even the cost savings. Affordability is a huge piece of that, but when we're working with OER, we're talking about giving students access on day one. We're talking about giving you as the faculty member the ability to control the content, whether that's editing it or keeping it, freely sharing it, doing whatever you want to do to expand that reach of knowledge. Those are just a few reasons to choose OER. We've been doing this and faculty have been doing this for a number of years and we now know also that effectively delivered open materials have been proven to improve student learning outcomes just as well as their publisher produced counterparts. And so we've published a lot of this research at Lumen and we won't dwell too much on it today, although Libby and Matthew will have an opportunity to explain about the difference it's made at their institutions. But if you're interested in more of the research, definitely visit lumenlearning.com. And we've got some great stuff on there, especially with regards to how Pell eligible students have been able to perform right at the level of their peers, which makes us feel really good and let us know that we're on the right track. So suffice it to say, there's a lot of reasons to use OER in your classroom. And here at Lumen Learning, we come in to help you do this by curating the content. So as you've gone on your journey and started to find you know, resources to use in your class, you've probably come across that there's a lot of stuff out there, but it's not necessarily good. And even if it's good, it's not necessarily open. So that's really where we've come in as a part of our mission to the community, is to find and curate the best of the best, wrap it in a strong learning design, and then also deliver that through a secure platform that integrates with your LMS, whether it's Blackboard, Canvas, Moodle, D2L, et cetera. So we were wrapping that up with the user experience, and part of that is the technical support and the services that we provide. And that's part of my role as Director of Teaching and Learning to help make sure that the implementation is smooth and make sure that you have everything you need to support your efforts. Lumen offers three different types of courses. Candela, which is a standard e-text replacement, and then Waymaker and Ohm, which we'll be focusing on today um, with regards to math. Waymaker takes the um, e-text in Candela, that curated content, and wraps it into a personalized approach that, prevents, that presents the content in a study plan format. So in addition to presenting this content in a personalized way, we've also incorporated some faculty student connection tools and some messaging systems that really help you build those connections, not only with the students that are struggling, but also with the students that are doing a good job. So just to give you an idea about what it looks like, I'm within a Blackboard shell for Tidewater Community College. And so all of this content as part of the integration appears directly within your Blackboard, licenses and attributions at the bottom of each page. And within that, there are plenty of opportunities for students to try things and get solutions. They can work through the content. They can try another version, as you'll find out with Ohm. All of these questions are algorithmic. So we really believe that practice and assessment are part of the um, learning process. And so that's why we've designed this like, like it is here with Waymaker. And then at the end of each of these, students can check their knowledge. You as the faculty member get feedback on that the extent to their comp of their confidence. You can see how they're performing. Combination with the messaging tools is really what makes Waymaker so magical. So now to Ohm, and before I introduce Matthew and Libby, just to give you a large level version and show you a few things that we're talking about. Ohm stands for Online Homework Manager, and this grew out of the MyOpenMath open, Math, open um, courseware for math. 
And so this is the Lumen supported, secured, delivered version of the Myogen math. And so along with OM, you are going to find a huge bank of teacher created questions. I think we're up to 10,000, but because all of these are algorithmically generated, really there's an infinite type, um, infinite possibilities when it comes to our question banks. And again, you have the L LMS integration that has grade sync with your grade book. And so it will appear right in Blackboard no differently than the Waymaker that I just showed you. There are also content um, options available. In addition to the homework, you have text delivered either in an editable format, much like what you saw with that Waymaker text, or we also have texts that are in PDF form. So as Matthew and Libby will uh, explain, I think they're using the PDFs. So every instructor has a preference. We have plenty of options. There are videos, tutorials. You can embed hints and directed feedback. There's a lot that you can do with the OM system. We've also curated a number of courses to give you an easy starting point. This is part of one of the services we offer at Lumen, so you don't have to build it from the ground up. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. We're going to give you a really good wheel to start with, and then you can make it your own. So you can customize everything. You can align the outcomes to your student needs, the length of your term, etc. And the result of that is quality content, quality courseware, affordable courseware, and your students get day one access. So OM is making a big splash. Several people have been working with OER in the math, um, in the math field for quite a while, and we're really proud of what faculty like you have been able to put together because all of the effort you put into OM ends up getting kicked back out and it benefits faculty across the nation. So you can see the courses here that have been developed as uh, a very strong starting point with uh, PDFs and then ones that are available in editable text. So we've got some really exciting things coming and OM is going to be the basis of our conversation today. So back to our math superstars. Libby and Matthew Watts, who are both professors of math over at Tidewater Community College, and like I said, really first movers when it comes to OER. So last year, and this is where I took this picture from, uh, Libby and Matthew, this is kind of a surprise to you, but uh, last year they were honored by their faculty senate for bringing the OER movement to the math department at Tidewater. And it's not only Tidewater that they've affected, so as recipients of a 2016 grant from the community college system, this was um, from the Chancellor's Innovation Fund, they designed and have facilitated training, not only at Tidewater, but at several other colleges throughout the Virginia system, more than I um, can rattle off here right now. So thank you all for your efforts and for all your hard work. They're active members of FEMATIC and Matthew's teaching over at the Chesapeake campus. He teaches, uh, and that's the other great thing about having both of them here. No matter what math course you're teaching, Libby or Matthew are teaching it or have taught it. So Matthew is really the online stats and math for liberal arts guru. Um, he's teaching newly differential equations online, has taught that hybrid. He teaches dev math face to face as well as applied calculus. So Libby is on the Norfolk campus and she also teaches both online and face to face math for li liberal arts, um, dev math and we're really excited to have you all here. So thanks for being part of the conversation, Libby and Matthew. Um, we'll get rolling. So I thought we might start uh, from the beginning. Before we dive into the solution, um, I know we have members attending that are at different places in their OER journey. Could you all start by speaking to what were the issues you were looking to address when you started teaching OER? And then what really drew you to partner with Lumen and then work with the online homework manager? Is that Matthew and I? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I'll start. Um, so Tidewater Community College actually started a Z degree a few years back. And uh, the idea was that was that students could get an entire degree without paying anything for textbook costs. Um, it's called our TCCZ degree. And it's expanded. It started as just a business degree, and it's gone to others. But that's how I got started with it. Um, I never I, I never felt comfortable having my students buy textbooks that cost you know hundred plus dollars. Um, so when I heard about this degree, I 
said, how can I sign up and how do I get more information on this? And that's how I began my journey for OER. Um, we have a training course called uh, Pathways at our college that um, teaches you about OER and um, licensing and how to find materials, how to give credit where credit is due, uh, how to make your own OER materials, etc. And um, then I just I discovered my open math and I started working with that, taught with that for three years, and then um, when OM was available, I switched over to that because our college actually pays. Um, student that fee for students to get support with Lumen Ohm, and I've been uh, using that ever since. So our students using Lumen Ohm do not have to pay anything um, because that fee is covered for them. And then of course the textbooks are free unless they want to pay, you know, the fifteen dollars to have them printed. And then the the system itself is also free. Um, and I love the system. Um, some of the great features of it. Should I get into that now, or is that coming in another slide? <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we can talk about it at any time, but I think you said something important about the uh, Virginia system arrangement. I think it was at Tidewater, when you all launched into these OAR initiatives, you discovered that because you were able to retain so many more students, because the success rates were so much higher, I think that was the point that the system itself decided to fund this and just make those materials for OER a line item in their budget. So because you had seen such great results. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, that's powerful. But yeah, we can uh, dive into that. Matthew, do you have anything to add about you know the impetus behind um, even looking at OER? Yeah, I was going into uh, instructional design for the first time around this then. And uh, I didn't really think much about it as a student. I just thought about the information and learned it. Um, and then when I started to challenge myself to be a better instructor and a better instructional designer, um, I got really into creating materials for courses and designing courses. And I found that it was really hard to do that with publisher material because I couldn't just, you know, legally cut stuff up and mix stuff together. And I was stuck with, you know, this book that everybody wanted to use and it didn't go along with what I was trying to do. And, um, and then I realized Libby was, you know, she was about a semester ahead of me using these OER materials that I could go in and I could customize things exactly how I wanted them using them. That really brought me in freedom. And uh, yeah, and as she mentioned why we kind of as an institution have, have been leaning on Lumen and getting their support. Yeah, a lot of great so, reasons. So yeah, um, like I said in the beginning, it's the affordability is one piece, right? But then really when it comes down to it, it's the freedom to not follow this prescriptive path. And you end up going this route, you end up becoming a faculty member because you have something to share. And it's a beautiful thing when you can actually share it in the form that you want to share it in. And so I think that uh, a lot of people would agree with you. That's, that's a prime reason to move toward OER as well. Yeah. So, so into the nuts and bolts, um, Libby, you mentioned, you know, that you were, had set up your course. And so if you could now speak to that, that process of setting it up, how did you end up structuring your courses? Tell us about the nuts and bolts, and then maybe what you discovered in terms of the features and functionalities of OM as you were going through that process. Sure. Uh, like I said, I started with my open math, um, which we lovingly called mom. And um, that's how, uh, you know, did you explain earlier that OM sort of copied over that site and made it some upgrades and stuff to it? Or I'm right. not sure if I missed that. Yeah, no, uh, let, me, let me go through that again, though, because it is important. So OM is an outgrowth, basically, of My Open Math, which was authored by David Lipman. And we work very closely with David Lipman. You'll find his uh, smiling face on our, on our Lumen website as well. And so he is still very actively involved in the nuts and bolts of that program and coding and continuing to provide support. But given that it was his you know, brainchild initially, um, suffice it to say, you know, surprise, one man cannot provide the level of support given, you know, the growth that this has had and, you know, the, the upspring of support that faculty, you know, have 
really come on and we've really grown. So Lumen has taken on um, that support piece. We continue to host that. We also continue to host My Open Math. But in terms of the security, the feature enhancements, you know, we're putting some development work into OWN that is uh, really going to make it a sophisticated, scalable OER solution for institutions. So yeah, you'll still be hearing from David. And um, many things have changed, you know, beyond just the name. But um, we're still working very closely together as a community and everything that the community puts in as part of Lumen's mission, we're giving that back and helping to further the cause. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Luminome wasn't an option when I started this journey. So I was using my open math and um, I, I started with developmental math, like pre-algebra and um, intermediate algebra courses. And they had, David Lippman had some TN courses in there um, that I was able to rearrange and um, make them fit for my courses. Um, that's what I really liked about the program was the flexibility of design. I was able to set it up however I wanted, have as many assignments as I wanted. I could even add questions if I couldn't find the one that I wanted from the question bank. I could create them myself. Um, one of my favorite features of both systems is the ability for students, as they're doing a homework problem, they have a link at the bottom that says post this question to the forum. All they do is click it and then hit submit and their question goes to the forum. The entire class sees it, I see it, anybody can participate in answering that question and they don't have to put any of the math um, stuff in there. If there's a graph or uh, special symbols, all that transfers into the forum for them. Um, so I, I give my students extra credit if they if they answer those questions or help people out in the forum. Um, so those are some of my favorite things about Movement Own is how you can design it how you want, have the students post to the forum, and the ability to create your own questions. Another really great feature is that you set up your homework assignments and then you want to have a quiz based off those homework assignments. You can create a quiz using the questions from your homework and it takes a matter of seconds to set that up. And then when you get ready to, to give an exam, you can set your exam up so all the questions either come from the quiz or the homework. And uh, that helps you avoid the whole, well, this wasn't on the homework uh, scenario with your students. Um, yeah, so that's what I have. Matthew? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it's not bad. Unless you're so, talking now. Okay, there you are. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've uh, designed a couple of courses, and I, I really love how everything is in one site. You know, when I was trying to make this work with my math lab, I was splitting between my math lab and Blackboard, and I know that uh, there is a way to get Lumen to be fully integrated into Blackboard, but I really don't like the way Blackboard shows mathematical typeset stuff. And so I think I can just display beautiful math, almost LaTeX level, you know, people are familiar with LaTeX um, typesetting, LaTeX level quality of, of showing mathematical formulas. And it's just it's so easy to bring in um, pictures and information and put everything into one LMS. So, that's the way I think of, of the Luminome site, is this is a complete LMS, and I pretty much bypass um, Blackboard altogether. So um, I'm told that, that the integration with Blackboard is amazing. Yeah, and in terms of the, the nuts and bolts, I think, Libby, it was you who initially developed the developmental math sequence or course for Tidewater, right? Was that you? Uh, yeah. I, I can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I took the CAN courses that were there and uh, I made some developmental math courses out of them for our college and our system. Yeah, can you talk through maybe the uh, structure, how you structured those? Was there you know, a predictable pattern to 
the text, the homework assignments, just to give the people that are listening an idea about how you all are structuring your developmental math. Well, I uh, started with what was there, but it, of course I had to do a lot of work to it because uh, our developmental courses are set, split into nine different four-week modules. So I had to create nine different courses that are four weeks long. Um, so I set mine up by week, week one, week two, et cetera. And um, I, I think I'm answering your question. Just stop me if I'm not. <clears throat> I start off writing the objectives for that week, and then I link them to a uh, reading assignment that has to do with those objectives. So what I do is I just take one of the OER books, whatever one I like. That's another advantage to it is you can use multiple books for one course, and the students don't even really notice because it's all seamless to them. So I link them out to their book, and then I also Below that, list a whole bunch of videos from the watch that relate to that topic. And uh, Jane Susha is at Phoenix University, is that right? Phoenix College, something like that. Um, anyway, he has created tons and tons and tons of OER math videos that are in YouTube that you can just link to, and they're really easy to search and stuff. It's the Math is Power for You. Oh, Matthew posted the link. <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Um, so I grab videos from him and post those in there, and then I have a homework assignment, or a practice assignment, a homework assignment, and usually a quiz. And the last thing is the forum. So if they want to ask questions about that, like, that week, there's a forum, but of course they can also just access it through the homework on every question, they can post a link. Um, so that's what I did. I, I sometimes had to, to pick from multiple books to find to meet all the objectives for our courses. And um, sometimes I had to find, ask James Susha to make a, diff, a different type of video for me because, you know, like persistence of equations, for instance. Um, <clears throat> Well, for the word problem, sometimes you're using systems of equations, and sometimes you want your students to change, to solve them with just one variable. So I had him make some of those videos for me. And that was pretty much it. That's my process. Yeah, that's great. And then the ability, again, the freedom of OER, to go and pick and choose things that fit exactly what you wanted to do and exactly the needs for the Tidewater students. That is a powerful thing, too. And on the screenshot on the PowerPoint, you can see the Get Help video. I think it's worth mentioning that many, I don't know if I can say the majority because I can't speak for all 10,000, but a bunch of these questions come with the videos that are embedded right below it. And those are actually linking out, in most cases, to Seuss's videos and all of the great materials that he's invested time to, to give to this community. To, uh, to really help the students, not only at his institution, but again, all around the nation and the world even, because now we know that uh, these videos are being watched in many countries. That is a great thing to have the videos integrated right in line with the problem, everything that they need. And again, because it's algorithmic, if the students need to attempt a different um, question, they can do so. And again, for your quizzing and test purposes, if they're sitting side by side, taking the quiz, taking the test, that no two students are going to end up having that same experience. So that's great. Yeah. So Matthew, from the ID perspective, um, is there anything that you would want to add about how you structured maybe some of your other courses or just that course setup process? Yeah. Is there a way to share a screen? Yeah. Let's uh, let me get you over here. And I'm going to request screen share. So you should have something pop up on your screen there. There we go. Let me see that. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so this is just a look at what I'm I'm working with this semester and uh, 
how much time we have, but I can quickly show the two courses that I've put a lot of time into. One is statistics. That is available as a template course, um, but you also can probably copy my newest version of it. And it's Map 157 here. Uh, I love having the calendar at the top. So this is an interactive calendar where they can click on all their upcoming assignments and go directly to them. Always have a weekly announcement where I can easily put in some CC picture and let them know what the dates are. And then I teach the content by unit that I call experiences. And if we go into one of these, we'll give some motivation for the experience. We give learning objectives. Um, things like vocabulary can be taken right from the text. These are PDFs that will open up. I'm using the OpenStax statistics textbook for this class. Um, then there's the textbook reading just for this. Um, I'll include the videos. So there's videos that go along with this from the authors. And then uh, I'll make my own videos showing how to incorporate technology. And these are embedded in, but they also link out into YouTube. And, uh, these are all CC videos. And then I like to create other documents. So I'll make my notes and put those in a PDF. Um, cool websites that have good calculators or simulations or things like that. Um, those are all the resources provided. Of course, there's always a question and answer forum where you know students will come in and they'll ask about certain problems and create discussion. Uh, and then uh, we get into problem. I have a problem set that's for a grade, and uh, students often want additional problems, so there's some extra problems that aren't counting towards your grade. Uh, with statistics, I like to add in critical thinking, and this is another forum assignment, and I'll give them a series of questions. Um, so for instance, how do you know when to use the binomial distribution? Um, and then they do written responses. And I find that, that these written assignments are, are a huge help in, help in them understanding what's going on. Uh, but that's not necessarily applicable to every type of math. But statistics, it works really well. Uh, and then I have the application, which is sort of a mini project at the end of each. And I've created all these for the most part. Um, so this one, um, we're given the situation of selecting jurors or a jury. And there's an issue of representing the population. And uh, it ends up being a binomial distribution. And they create graphs. And they upload this stuff. And they write an essay. And, I mean, I just love these multi-part problems that I've created for each one of these experiences. So this involves a lot of grading on my part, but uh, it's, it's a great learning experience for the students. Um, and then real quickly, I have a di differential equations course that's not yet available as a template course, but might be soon. Um, but you can just you can take it from me if you just look at uh, Edwater Community College on there. Um, I don't have the very similar layout, but I don't have the um, critical thinking uh, forum assignments here. Uh, and a vocabulary, I've actually created all the vocabulary myself. And I was saying how it's really nice to put in all this math type uh, in here. So you can see an example of putting that. And again, the pictures are easy to add in and make this look really nice. So we're looking at Bernoulli differential equations. But again, you get a reading from the textbook. You get a set of practice problems. And uh, in lieu of the critical thinking questions, I actually have been doing computational assignments using CoCalc. CoCalc is a open source alternative to um, Maple. It used to be called Sage. And so I have a set of assignments for that where uh, they click on this and they go in. And that's cloud-based, so they don't have to download and install anything. They just sign in and they can be programming in, in minutes. Um, and then, of course, there's applications there. Uh, yeah, that's great. I think it's worthy to mention, you know, we've got enough smart folks working on projects like this, like the uh, calculator you just showed, that there are really great tools out there that are open tools. I know for our college algebra course, we also have the Desmos calculator built into that. So um, there are options there. Yeah, another, too. I'm gonna another great one is uh, GeoGebra. You can do some really cool, like even 3D graphing, and I've done that in, in classes before. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I just dropped into the um, chat room a link to ohm.lumenlearning.com. This is a course where you sign into Ohm, 
But then down at the bottom of that page, if you don't already have your instructor account, you can request it there. Just make sure that you give us, you know, a web page that leads to your name because we do verify all the instructor status before we uh, create your account. But that will allow you to go in and just like Matthew said, people have built these courses. They set them up to be searchable and to be shareable. So you'll be able to go right in and uh, pull up the Tidewater courses and then use the things that they've done and then continue furthering, you know, the movement, not reinventing the wheel. Great. So beyond the course setup, you got it set up, you've launched it, you all have been doing this for multiple semesters. So tell us, how's it going? What you like about it? And uh, maybe even just as importantly, how did, have your students reacted? What did they say? Um, <clears throat> I love it, and I hope that I never have to use anything else again. <laughs> um, my students, I've been actually tracking data on it for a while, and uh, overwhelmingly my students enjoy it. Um, you know, probably for them, the thing they like the most is that it's free. Um, and the complaints that I've had the most from them, and even, and the, even those are not that great. I mean, I don't have that many complaints, but the couple that I do get in is a little bit of design. Um, they think that design is could be more interesting. Um, and some of them complain that it's difficult to get around, but then others say that it's one of their favorite things is how easy it is to navigate. So I hear a bit of mixed things from my students, but overwhelmingly, um, they are very happy with it. And uh, one of the questions I asked is, would you recommend this uh, software to students? And they, and I get, you know, like 90% of them saying yes. So um, students like it. I like it. Um, so one of the things, Matthew and I got a grant to do those workshops um, a couple of years ago. And ever since then, we've sort of become the go-to people when um, our faculty have any sort of issues with it. So we've been doing that. And other faculty that start using it generally stay using it. And they don't usually have too many problems with it. Um, if they do, I tell them, I try to help them first. And then if I can't, I send them to support at lumenlearning.com, <laughs> the email address that you will want to know if you start using the system. And um, the response time for that is very quick. Usually within the same day, you get the issue taken care of or addressed. Um, what were your other questions, Elizabeth? I'm sorry. Yeah, so the feedback. And you mentioned a few things that the students said about the, the user experience, which, you know, it's, it's subjective thing. But understandably enough, we have uh, hired someone to be part of our user experience efforts. And so we are going to be looking at this from that, you know, from a, a more modern perspective. And the system's highly functional, and I know you can find your way around really easily. But just so you know, we're also looking at ways to make finding questions easier for faculty. Currently, and you can see this on the screenshot, you can search different libraries, you can search by keywords, and then you can sort by number of times used, the average time that uh, it takes students to answer the question, which gives you a level of uh, an indicator of difficulty, right? And then whether or not there's a video attached, all of those things are tagged. And so we're also in the process of looking at how can we make this better? Um, and that's something that's very exciting for us. So yeah, improvements on the way. But uh, to your question about my question, it was um, what you liked about it, what your students have given you feedback on, and then maybe, you know, how does it compare to what you had been doing previously? Okay, um, how it compares, well, um, I was using, am I allowed to say who I was using before, or should I just refrain from that? I believe you were using another public, a very popular publisher product, um, highly popular yeah. across the nation. Okay. I guess I don't know at all which one. I was using a publisher system, um, and, you know, at first it was great because it was one of the first systems that I ever used. And before that, I was just manually grading paper homework. Um, 
And so when these systems came out, it was wonderful. It's like, oh, the students can get lots of practice and I don't have to grade it and they're automatically graded and there's help out there for them. Um, so, you know, not totally, it, it was great except for the cost. The costs were, were just really phenomenal. And like Matthew said earlier, you still had to use two different systems because the, the online homework system I was using was not a good LMS. So I still had to have my syllabus and all that other junk in my Blackboard shell. And then students would just go to the online homework system to do homework. And one of the great things about switching to Luminome was that I could just streamline all that into one place. My students still check into my, or I mean into Blackboard um, at the very beginning of the semester just because every student has access to that as soon as they register for the, for the class. And I just tell them in an announcement, okay, welcome, we're not going to be using this, so please go here and here's information on how you set up your account and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I don't know if there's time for it, but I would like to talk about using OM with online classes because a lot of the classes that Matthew and I teach are, are online classes and I would like to talk a little bit about the communication features and whatnot in Lumen Ohm that yeah, have been great absolutely. online. Yeah, please. Can I share my screen for a second? Sure. Let me uh, let me enable that here. Then send me the screen share request, and you should be able to launch from there. Okay. And would it, be, would it be okay if I also shared your emails in case participants have questions or if they want to reach out to you for materials or additional questions they might not want to mention here? Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Okay, great. Okay. So um, here is when, <laughs> when I get up in the morning and check into uh, OM. This is usually what I see um, over on the left here, under, next to all the courses I'm teaching in red, it'll come out how many new posts I have and how many new messages. So at the top, it displays all my new messages. Uh, messaging is sort of like um, sort of like email, but it's right in OM. So you can only access the messages when you're in OM. But it's a quick way for students to contact you. Like if they're already in there doing their homework, they can send you a message and ask you questions. So I have all my new messages here, and then down here are all my new forum posts. So I was explaining to you earlier that students can post questions to the forum. Um, so an example of that is right here. A student had a question about number 17 in this section of the homework. It tells me who the student is and what course it is and what day they posted it and what time. And you might notice that these are in order. Um, at the bottom is the, the oldest post and then you work your way up to the newest one. So I generally start at the bottom and work my way through. But just to show you, um, this is an online student and she had a question about solving systems of equations with the substitution method. So I try to get students to help each other in my courses, but I, if I go the day or two and nobody's responded, um, I go ahead and I answer it. And you can see that the math, well, I don't know if you can see, but the math is using the equation editor and it's nice and neat and the way us math people like it. Um, so now she has another question that I'll get to later. So if I don't want to answer it right now, I can just click mark on red. Um, so basically, my online students communicate with me mostly by asking questions in the forum and messaging me. Some of them still do email me from time to time, but it makes um, communicating in online classes really effective and easy. So. Yeah, that's super efficient. Yeah. So are there any questions on that before I stop sharing? Yeah, well. Matthew, anything anything to add, and then also you know feedback from your students on what their experience has been using it. Uh, you know, I I think 
I could summarize it by saying that anytime somebody asks me, you know, can I do this or can I do that, I don't necessarily know, but I know there's some work around to make it work. I've never run into something that people wanted to do with instructional design that couldn't be done with this site. It's so fully featured, and, and we've always found cool workarounds, and, and I have a lot of fun doing that. Um, we just set up a course to prepare people for our placement test, and it allows them to take a test and then see which objectives they're proficient in and which ones they aren't, and the ones they aren't, it links them to customized objective-based assignments so they can then go in and study just the stuff they need. And, and you know, it was something that, that we just looked through the forums and figured out how that worked. And um, I don't know, and the students, yeah, students are going to be reluctant to do any new website. Anything that's new and different is extra work and they might not want to do it. But in the end, once they get used to it with a good orientation set up, you know, in your course, um, it's, they're actually going to be better. And, and we all know that being better with websites and technology is a great skill for these students. Yeah, definitely. I think also the uh, the benefit here of being such a, a small company and a small uh, group of people working on this, small talented group, is that we're able to make these connections and um, make these improvements on the fly. As soon as we recognize something, we're able to go in and then David or someone on our team is, uh, is you know, writing the code and making uh, these updates and things. So, Libby, I'm going to request control back from you here. That's fine. <laughs> so, you will grant my request. And then, all right, here, I, I think I can just share. There I am. Okay. So, we'll pop this back up. So, yeah, we're able to make changes. And we, we use Slack to communicate as a company. And uh, I have noticed that there is a, a channel dedicated to OM. And so, someone will throw something up like, hey, this is up, or this is something that we think would be really nice, and then they chat about it, and then it comes up and say, hey, well, I fixed it. Here's what I did. And so to have that kind of turnaround on features and functionality, it, it's pretty much unheard, well, it is unheard of in the publisher world unless there's just something catastrophically wrong with content or something. And so to have that agility, I think, really uh, works to everyone's benefit as well. It's truly a community-based and build system. So um, let's turn now before we have Q&A or some conversation, and I know we've been conversing in the chat as we've been going along, which is cool. Um, let's talk about advice you would have to faculty. So other faculty considering, you know, the move to OER or the move to an open math solution like OM or even Waymaker that we looked at at the beginning, what would your advice be to them? And I guess, Matthew, let's start with you this time, just to change up the order. Uh, well, I'm the kind of person who usually just jumps in the deep end with stuff, but I think the best advice is probably to just try things in moderation. And so pick one class that you want to try to you know, convert over and, and work with OER if you haven't done that. And uh, start on it the semester before it begins. Don't be doing it on the fly. And, uh, you know, connect with any faculty at your institution or in your professional development organization that are working on it and, and connect with somebody helpful at Lumen. And uh, I think I've had support from all those things and it's, it's made the transition pretty, pretty painless. Yeah, on that note, I did want to show, we've been talking about the Lumen support and so this is lumenlearning.com support just to give you an idea of the resources that are available to our Lumen faculty partners. We have different training materials that walk you through because a lot of OERs are also do-it-yourselfers. And so understanding and recognizing that, we have a very thorough training material and knowledge support base. We also have a community Slack. If you've never used Slack, it is an interactive app, web-based kind of uh, exchange tool. And so you can join our Slack community, and then you can dip into channels that are dedicated to math or science or specific course areas. And then you're automatically connected with other folks who are working on similar projects. So that's a cool resource. And then you can also uh, just reach out. Uh, Libby mentioned the support at lumenlearning.com email. This is tied in with that as well. And then a new feature that we've just started are what I'm calling on-demand office hours. So understanding that everyone's in different places but sometimes you want to talk to someone one-on-one, -on -one. you can now come in, you can select a day, you can select a time, 
and pretty much, you know, we come to you at your convenience. And this is a change up. We did used to do standard office hours, um, but I think it had the same type of effect as some of our faculty office hours. You know how office hours go with the best intentions and then you hope the students show up and the ones that show up are the ones that don't need to be there anyway, right? So, so um, to get better attendance but also serve our customers better, we do have those on-demand office hours as well. So this is definitely something to bookmark and then um, all the support that you need here with Lumen. So um, that's good advice, uh, Matthew. Don't dive in deep. There's some wheels already created to do a little bit at a time, you know, lest you overwhelm yourself. Libby, what would you add to that advice? It is quite possible you have muted yourself. Or Matthew, would you add anything to that to that advice? Uh, no, I mean, I'd, I'd be open for just getting uh, any questions from the faculty here. Sounds good. Well, we'll move right into uh, the QA and conversation. But um, Mary, Mary Lou did ask about, I think you showed at the beginning of your presentation, the, the cost to the institution. Yes. Let me go back. And so these are these are support fees. Of course, you know, we have all of our content freely available, but the magic to scaling OER and getting where you need to be, um, you could use a little help from friends. And that's really where Lumen comes in. And so this is our support fee. It's $25 per student. Faculty are able to, well, institutions, for example, the VCCS Virginia system pays for this. So faculty can adopt any Lumen product, whether it's for math, biology, English comp, at no charge to the students. They don't ever see this support fee. So that is one way that institutions handle it. Sometimes the departments will pick up the cost as well, and so students also never see that fee um, either. We've also just piloted a course fee model. So if you're hearing the uh, magic word inclusive access tossed around, this is the materials or course fee method by which this support fee is attached as students register for and then it's wrapped into their tuition and then this is handled on the back end. So it's nothing that they have to do after the first day of class. So it can be paid for like that. And then we've even launched um, some student pay options for the bookstore which is your traditional access code type access. We piloted that this fall. And there are different bookstore partners, as you all may be aware. Follett, we have a very glorious partnership with, where Follett adds zero markup to that $25 support fee. They are really in it to also make a difference. And so we prefer to uh, partner with them where possible and because they don't have the markup. Of course, there are other um, different booksellers that are out there that do not have that arrangement with us, but we would still be willing, you know, to put that there. But we only work with the institution. So you won't find us in the used bookstores off campuses. There's no um, haggling or anything like that happening. It is the $25 support fee, but there are various ways to, uh, to pay for it. Did that answer the question? Right. Yeah, it's five dollars a student. That's pretty much uh, what that comes out to, Libby. Whenever we divide all of the students that are using these materials by what um, the Virginia system is paying, it comes out to about five dollars a student, which is a spectacular, um, a spectacular um, bottom line, right? And then that's going to continue going down as we continue to, you know, raise the enrollments of students that are involved, and we're growing every year because the word is spreading. Yeah. Any other questions? Let's see, Donna. How much is it to help us write the courses? Um, the support is the support. So that's wrapped up in that $25 support fee per student. And typically what we do is that we'll consult with you and figure out what you're doing, what you like about what you're doing, where you want to go with it, um, how it aligns with your current courses. We do a lot of heavy lifting like that on the front end, and then we will come in and 
uh, whenever we can, use experts like Libby and Matthew to also come in and help us with your faculty. So this is you know, some front end work to get a nice template that you as the course lead or faculty developer are happy with. Lumen will come in and do an on the ground training with your instructors to make sure that they're comfortable with the system, they know the ins and outs. And then from there, after the launch, we stick with you while you're teaching it, um, staying involved and having conversations about not only getting those courses set up, but now the magic has started because you can do so much more with these open courses than you can these traditionally copywritten materials. And so we're in it for the long haul, the pedagogy, maintaining those connections, and um, yeah, helping you be successful all the way around. Good question. Let me know if, uh, if I didn't answer it thoroughly. So three different types of systems I mentioned, or courseware, are, are Candela, Waymaker, and Ohm. Candela is $10 per student. This is the simple e-text, and this looks very similar to when you go to lumenlearning.com. You can tap into the catalog. That is the Candela text. We've learned through the research, though, that you know affordability is awesome, and so if that's solely what you need, that's great, and these e-textbook replacements are great, but a free book is not enough to guarantee student success. That's what the research is showing, which is why we went into Waymaker and then these other systems like Ohm. So it's $10, $25, and $25. Waymaker and Ohm, both at $25. And so those are the different costs. And we did a study with Waymaker in the fall of 2016. These were in business areas that included over 5,000 students. In the end, we wanted to compare Pell eligible students' performance to non-Pell eligible students' performance because you've probably heard all too many times this notion of the, the Pell penalty. And so we were really encouraged to see the results that these Pell eligible students with courseware like Waymaker, um, that they performed right at the level of their non-Pell eligible peers. So we know that these things like personalized learning model, tools that build the faculty-student connection, and then having assessment be actually part of the learning process, so giving them frequent practice and feedback opportunities in the text, but also in those uh, self-checks and quizzes, that that stuff works. So we, um, as a community, we need to all be doing more stuff like this as we're moving to impact student success. Okay. You need to pay the 25 fee from day one in order to have access to assignments. That's a very good question, Marcella. And the answer is no. In all of these cases, when people partner with Lumen, we have all of the content available on day one. And that content is never removed. So um, it is the access to the graded quizzes, the grade sync quizzes, that um, students would lose access to. But no, as part of the mission, the content is freely available. It's there from day one, as it should be for students. And then the question, are they sometimes using all three or just two. Sometimes we have seen a mixture of Waymaker and Ohm being used together or of Waymaker and Candela. And the interesting thing is if you're using Waymaker, let's say for college algebra, Ohm will be powering many of those practice opportunities and feedback opportunities, but it's still a Waymaker product. So there is a little bit of bleed over in terms of the technology. Um, but I would say the most common use would be sometimes people will fold in Candela for content that is not covered in one of our uh, Waymaker courses. So it is possible to mix and match, um, but we see a few combinations of each. But each of these courses are comprehensive enough, like for Ohm, there are textbook problem sets, just like Libby and Matthew showed, practice opportunities, graded opportunities. There are robust uh, courses set up for Ohm. And then the same for Waymaker. So it is a really a special, a special occasion when we find the need to mix them, but it is possible. Uh, Libby or Matthew, do you want to add anything to that based on your experience? I'm sorry about your microphone, Libby. <laughs> yeah, we've we've just been primarily using the Lumen Home, and uh, but we're interested in this Waymaker. We're gonna try that out. Yeah, if, um, yeah, if uh, anyone in the audience is teaching with, is teaching math for liberal arts or concepts and statistics or even college algebra 
And um, those are very robust offerings that we have with Waymaker. And so we'd be excited to share those. So definitely reach out to me. I'm Elizabeth at LumenLearning.com. And then I'll get you access to those courses so you can check them out. And Donna, I will check on this free map as well and uh, get back with you to see what we have available in that area. So if you would like to learn more from here, and again, thanks to everyone for coming out and being so interactive. This is obviously something that's on people's hearts and something that's really important to, to faculty who care. So we appreciate your coming out and talking about uh, open solutions for math today. To learn more, you can go to lumenlearning.com. And in fact, there are some really great walkthroughs. I have this pulled up right here at the bottom as you scroll down. You can learn about the three different courseware types. And then we even have some really detailed walkthroughs for statistics, algebra, and math for liberal arts. And so reach out to me, Elizabeth, to get uh, direct access to those. But you can learn a lot just by visiting our website. And uh, Libby and Matthew, thank you for all you're doing. And thank you for being here to share with folks about it today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. Can yes, you we can hear you now. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you all are doing great work. And same for the people out in, in the audience. Let's keep doing what we're doing because it is making a difference. Thanks again, and hope you all have a great rest of the week.